starting. So yeah, let's start. Start. Then Vera, she send the link. Yeah. Good afternoon everyone. Today I am going to talk about heart. Introduction itself I told you I am going to take the classes on CVS. That is blood, the heart and the vessels which carry it. Okay. Today I am going to start with the heart. It is a very light topic and it has got nice diagrams. You can understand it easily. Okay. Start. This is our heart. Okay. Can you identify all the vessels? This one is arch of aorta. This is superior vena cava and this is inferior vena cava. This is right atrium. Uh, uh, this is the right atrium. This is the left atrium. This is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle. Okay? And blood is coming via pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Okay? So this is our heart. Let's start. Okay. How big is the heart? The human heart is approximately the size of a fist and weighs less than a pound. So the weight of the heart is about 300 grams we can say. It's about 300 grams and it is enclosed. Where is it present? It is present in the mediastinum region. Medial cavity of the thorax in the mid of the thorax in the, that's called mediastinum region. It is in the medial cavity of the thorax and on both the sides it has got one lung each and it is flanked on each side by the lungs. So on each side is one lung present. Okay. So where, how is this if heart is present? The apex is directed towards the left hip. If apex of the heart is towards the left hip and it is around the fifth intercostal space. If you count the intercostal spaces, the apex is at the fifth intercostal space. Whereas the broad aspect of the heart, this is the narrow part, this is the broad part of the heart. The broad aspect of the uh, or the base is pointed towards your right shoulder. It is pointed towards the right shoulder and that is lying behind the second rib. Broad part is lying behind the second rib and it is base is pointed towards your right shoulder. Whereas the apex is pointed towards your left hip. Now, as you all know, the heart is enclosed by a double walled sac called the pericardium. It, the, it has got two sacs called the pericardium. The superficial one, the white one, what you can see in this diagram is the fibrous pericardium. The superficial and it is loosely fitted part is called the fibrous pericardium. It protects and anchors the heart. So it is heart is enclosed in this white sheath, fibrous sheath that is the fibrous pericardium and there is one more pericardium beneath that. So this is the fibrous pericardium what you can see. Now the pericard this is what we are seeing and in between can you see some pericardial fluid the grayish color one that is enclosed between the two pericardial layers. What is that? They are parietal layer, this is the parietal layer and this is the visceral layer. Outside is the your pericardium. Outside is the pericardium. See this one is the fibrous pericardium. See it carefully. Outside first layer is the fibrous pericardium. Just inside of the fibrous pericardium is the parietal layer of the pericardium. And, 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 and then there is visceral layer of the pericardium. In between these two layers of the pericardium is the pericardial cavity. So the grayish one is the pericardial cavity. So after this pericardial cavity there is one more layer called the myocardium and there is one more layer called the endocardium. We will come to it later. So fibrous pericardium is there. The outside layer is the fibrous pericardium. Then we have got parietal layer of pericardium. Parietal layer of serous pericardium. There is visceral layer of serous pericardium. So in between this parietal and visceral layer is a fluid called pericardial fluid. So what is the function of this pericardial fluid? Pericardial fluid acts as a lubricant and it will, and it will uh, beat in a relatively easy way. In a frictionless environment it can easily contract and ex 
expand it can contract and expand so it 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 has got a lubricant and how much uh, pericardial fluid is there 5 to 30 ml of pericardial fluid is there so it acts as a lubricant and so that the heart can beat with a relatively easy frictionless environment see what he is showing in this diagram is the first is the that square one on the top heart picture so there are three layers in it one is the fibrous pericardium then there is another two layers serous layer and the uh, parietal layer and the visceral layer and this light color one is the pericardial fluid this is all is the outer covering of the heart that's all the outer covering of the heart pericardium so the heart wall are composed of three layers the outer epicardium epicardium means just below this pericardium is the epicardium so that is what i told you between those two layers is the pericardial fluid outer epicardium middle layer is called the myocardium and the last layer is called the endocardium look at this epicardium visceral pericardium okay so heart has got three layers epicardium myocardium and the endocardium and outer these three layers is your fibrous pericardium so parietal layer and the visceral layer and in between this pericardial cavity this is all your epicardium or serous pericardium so heart apart from the pericardium you have got outer epicardium myocardium and the endocardium this outer epicardium is nothing but your serous pericardium only next slide okay you are finished with this next slide the myocardium myocardium is got the muscle see the thick one this is the myocardium what you can see from there to here is the myocardium okay so myocardium consists of thick bundles of the cardiac muscle and it looks like ring like arrangements are there in it okay that is the one which is contracting the myocardium has got the muscle that is a thicker layer this is the layer of the heart that actually contracts and it is got a dense fibrous connective tissue it has got dense fibrous connective tissue okay so we have finished with the myocardium myocardium is nothing but the muscle layer this is the one which is con actually contracting now coming to the innermost layer is endocardium endocardium this myocardium also is present in your pacemaker tissue and conductive tissue of the heart also then the inner layer of the heart is called the endocardium it is a thin glistening sheet of endothelium that it will lie in the heart chambers even the blood vessels are also lined by this layer continuous with the linings of the blood vessels leaving and entering the heart so it is the innermost layer of the heart is the endocardium and this endocardium is continuing with the layers of the blood vessels also lining of the blood vessels leaving and entering the heart so we are finished with the three layers of the heart epicardium myocardium and the endocardium oh, the epicardium again this all this is covered in this fibrous pericardium the heart has four hollow chambers so two atria and two ventricles what is the function of the atria function of this atria is to receive blood receive blood so it is got the receiving chambers so it has got the capacity function it will receive the blood and also atria can contract and contraction function so right atrium and the left atrium if you can say right atrium is getting the blood from where superior and inferior vena cava and the left atrium is getting the, the blood from pulmonary veins so atria has got this capacity function that is receiving the blood and ventricles have got two ventricles they have got the filling chambers 
so once the ventricles fail they have got the pumping capacity ventricles when they receive the blood from the atria they will contract and they will pump so pumping action is there of the ventricles so two atria are there and two ventricles are there so ventricles have to do lot of work function of the atria is not much they receive the blood and they only have to send it to the ventricles when the valves open but the function of the ventricles is when they contract the blood should go to the whole of our body so function of the ventricles is very strong okay so the heart now as i told you the blood is flowing into the right atria from the veins okay from the veins means superior vena cava from the upper part of the body all the blood is getting collected via the superior vena cava and it's sending into the right atrium and from the inferior part of the body via the inferior vena cava it is coming into the right atrium from the right atrium the blood is naturally going into the ventricles so right atrium is receiving blood from the superior and inferior vena cava see this is the right atrium okay so it is receiving blood from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium when this av valves open the blood from the right atrium is entering the right ventricles okay so this is about your and this so this is the superior vena cava and this is the inferior vena cava okay so blood is coming into the right atrium via the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava and when this valves in between the atrium and ventricle are the valves between the left atrium and left ventricle are also the valves and when these valves open the blood is coming from the right atrium into the right ventricle and from the left atrium into the left ventricle continues into the ventricles okay so about the right atrium so the ventricles i are i told you have to do lot of function than that of the atria so the ventricles are thick walled discharging chambers they are the pumps of the heart when they contract blood is propelled out of the heart and into the circulation when they contract the blood is propelling out so from the left atrium the blood is left ventricle sorry from the left ventricle the blood is coming into this aorta and from the right ventricle the blood is coming into pulmonary uh, uh, artery pulmonary artery okay blood is going into the pulmonary artery and when it is going from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery then this pulmonary artery will go into the lungs this is all impure blood deoxygenated blood it will go into the lungs and it will remove this carbon dioxide and get the oxygen from the lungs and enter the left atrium via these pulmonary veins so here you should remember all the arteries carry pure blood except pulmonary artery and all the veins carry impure blood except pulmonary vein this you must have studied earlier so all the arteries carry oxygenated blood except pulmonary artery and all the veins carry impure blood except pulmonary vein pulmonary vein has got the pure blood oxygenated blood pulmonary veins see this through pulmonary veins it is coming into the left atrium okay heart now the septum of the heart is divided by interventricular septum ventricles are separated by septum called interventricular septum interventricular septum and the atria are separated by interatrial septum this is the ventricular septum here will be the interatrial septum atria have got thin walls whereas the ventricles have got thick walls because they have to do lot of work they have to pump the blood to all over the body so this have got lot of this have, uh, walls of the ventricles are very thick so it is have atria right atrium and left atrium are separated by interatrial septum and right ventricle and left ventricle are separated by interventricular septum next one so i told you the heart functions as a double pump so what is this double pump 
one has to go into your lungs so that will be the pulmonary circuit one has to go through all over the body that is the systemic circuit so which has to do lot of work systemic circuit has to do lot of work so the heart functions as a double pump the right side works as a pulmonary circuit pump because it has to send the blood to the lungs pulmonary circuit pump so the it receives relatively so right atrium and the right ventricle receives deoxygenated blood so receives relatively oxygen poor blood from the veins of the body through superior and inferior vena cava this deoxygenated blood has to go into the lungs and get the oxygenated blood so this is the pulmonary circuit so right side works as a pulmonary circuit pump left side works as a systemic circuit so the blood then pumps out through the pulmonary trunk which splits into left and right pulmonary artery this through the pulmonary artery to right and left pulmonary artery it is going into the each lung through the pulmonary arteries the pulmonary arteries carry blood to the lungs the function of this pulmonary artery is carrying blood to the lungs and where the deoxygenated blood is replaced with oxygen is picked up and carbon dioxide is unloaded so deoxygenated blood so carbon dioxide is removed from that blood and oxygen is picked up and in the lungs and then the pure blood via pulmonary veins will reach the left atrium so through the pulmonary arteries impure blood is going via the pulmonary arteries into the lungs and getting it oxygenated and carrying via the pulmonary veins into the left atrium okay so oxygen rich blood drains from the lungs and is returned to the left side of the heart through the four pulmonary veins so here if you can see the diagram so this is right atrium this is left ventricle uh, sorry uh, right ventricle from the right ventricle blood is going via this pulmonary artery left side is going into the left lung via the left pulmonary artery and it is going via the right pulmonary artery into the right lung see this blue one it is going from here it is going into the right lung and the left lung via the right and left pulmonary artery and there it is getting oxygenation in the lungs both the sides and the pure blood is picked up via the and it is going pure blood after oxygenation it receives it is entering into the heart via this pulmonary veins there are two pulmonary veins left see this red ones are the pulmonary don't get confused because in uh, pulmonary artery and vein veins are in red color artery is in uh, blue color okay so via this picking up the oxygen it is going via both the veins from the uh, right side and via this veins these are pulmonary veins right side pulmonary veins these are left side pulmonary veins so pure blood is coming via the veins into the uh, left atrium and from there into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle via the aorta it is going all over the body it is giving away blood oxygen everywhere and collecting the carbon dioxide and going into the superior and inferior vena cava which is entering the right atrium and the right ventricle okay so oxygen rich blood drains from the lungs and is returned to the left side of the heart through the four pulmonary veins this circuit is called pulmonary circulation it's what is the only function of it is to carry blood to the lungs for gas exchange and then return it to the heart that's the only function of this pulmonary circulation it has to carry impure blood to the lungs and get pure blood back to the heart so pulmonary circuit same one in a enlarged way pulmonary circuit so right atrium right ventricle and it is getting carried by your pulmonary artery pulmonary artery this is left pulmonary artery this is right pulmonary artery it is going into the lungs and getting pure blood and it is going via this pulmonary veins four pulmonary veins to this side and to this side and they are entering into the left atrium this is the pulmonary circuit next one
the heart blood return to the left side of the heart is pumped out of the heart into the aorta blood is coming into the uh, 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 left atrium and the left ventricle pure blood now this pure blood is going out of the heart through this aorta this is arch of aorta it is going into the aorta okay blood return to the left side of the heart is pumped out of the heart into the aorta the systemic arteries branch from the aorta to supply the blood body tissues with the blood this aorta you will again give small branches arterioles then comes the uh, 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 capillaries then the venules ve uh, sorry uh, artery arterioles then they break the uh, 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 venules veins and cap capillaries will be in between where the exchange will happen then from the venous end venules veins and through superior and inferior vena cava it is coming into the heart so big arteries into small arteries arterioles then the capillaries venules veins they become big veins so now next slide oxygen poor blood circulates from the tissues now aorta is giving away the blood to all the body tissues so oxygen poor blood when it is giving rich blood again it is collecting the pure uh, deoxygenated blood to the right atrium via the systemic veins which empty their blood into either the superior or inferior vena cava from the lower extremities into the inferior vena cava from the upper extremity to superior cava and both are getting emptied into the right atrium this second circuit from the left side of the heart through the body tissues and back to the right side of the heart is called systemic circulation it supplies oxygen and nutrient rich blood to all the body organs the function of the systemic circulation is to supply oxygen and nutrient rich blood to all the body organs so this is the systemic circulation pulmonary circulation only going into the lungs and bringing back to the heart and this from the heart going all over the body and again entering to the right side of the heart is systemic circulation because the left ventricle is the systemic pump that pumps blood over a much longer pathway through the body its walls are thicker than those of the right ventricle so left in the uh, ventricle uh, left ventricle is much more stronger pump because it is sending the blood to all over the body it walls are thicker than those of the right ventricle whereas for the right ventricle it is only going to the lungs this has to go all over the body so it has to do lot of activity so because the left ventricle is a systemic pump that pumps blood over a much longer pathway throughout the body it walls are thicker and then those of your right ventricle it is a more powerful pump left side is the more powerful pump now the heart has got four valves can you see the valves so this is one valve separating the right atrium to the right ventricle is one valve okay left atrium to the left ventricle is one valve and when this blood is from the left ventricle it will go into the aorta i said so there is one valve here one valve here from the right ventricle it is going into the pulmonary artery i said so there is one valve here so what are the names of this valves the atrium and the ventricle separation of the walls are called av valves so right side of the heart we have got tricuspid valve this is a tricuspid valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle is a tricuspid valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle is a mitral valve or bicuspid valve all these valves have got uh, three flaps in it all this though in the diagram we can't see they have got three flaps in it except the mitral valve it has got only two flaps that is why it is called bicuspid valve or the mitral valve whereas all the other valves are semi lunar shaped valves that's why these valves are called semi lunar valves they have got three flaps in it okay the heart has got four valves 
two that separate the atria from the ventricles and two that separate the ventricles from their arteries all of what's the function of this valves all of this valves prevent back flow when the blood has come from the right atrium to the right ventricle again it can't go back here it has to go back into only to this big vessels okay that is why function of this valves is it will prevent backward flow of blood only in one direction the blood has to come from that way to this way that way to this way and from this into this big vessels so mitral valve is also called bicuspid valve because it has two cusps whereas the other have got three cusps in it the av valves are between the atria and the ventricles on the left side is the bicuspid or the mitral valve on the right side is the tricuspid valve they are all anchored by the cardia tendine they are they are all uh, are getting attached there with the help of this cardia tendine the right side is the tricuspid valve okay now coming to the semi lunar valve semi lunar valves are the valves See, these are the semi lunar valves from the right side we have got this pulmonary valve left side we have got the aortic valve you can see this aortic valve okay the semi lunar valves got the base of the large arteries leaving the ventricular chambers on the right side is the pulmonary valve it is present at the orifice beginning of the pulmonary artery so this is a this is the pulmonary valve on the right side is the pulmonary valve on the left side is the aortic valve aortic valve okay aortic valve is present at the orifice of the aorta that is why it has got the name aortic valve and uh, right side because it is present at the orifice of the pulmonary uh, artery that's why it has got pulmonary valve pulmonary okay now so one more thing here what i want to tell you is opening of the valve is a slow process opening they open slowly and without any noise but whereas the closure of the valves they close suddenly with the noise because the surrounding vibrating fluid is getting disturbed whenever they close suddenly they shut the surrounding vibrating fluid will make noise that is why sudden vibrating fluid means your blood makes noise that is why the closure is always with the noise whereas opening is a smooth process without any noise closure of the av valves will give rise to first heart sound whereas closure of the semi lunar valves give rise to second heart sound av valves closure of av valves will give rise to first heart sound whereas closure of the semi lunar valves will give rise to second heart sound Okay. Now coming to little bit about your ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 heart physiology. So now coming to the cardiac conduction system. Here you should know conducting system of the heart. This is the conductive system which will initiate or generate the impulse, and it is conducted throughout the heart. That is why it is called cardiac conducting system. So we have got where are these? These are also called the pacemaker tissue of the heart. What is the pacemaker tissue of the heart? SA node is the pacemaker tissue of the heart. it is present in the posterior wall of the right atrium it is present in the posterior wall of the right atrium this is called pacemaker tissue because it is the one whatever number of impulses it generates that is our heart rate supposing sa node is beating at a time of 80 per minute your heart rate will be 80 if it is beating at 70 your heart rate is 70 that is why this is the one which will initiate or generate the impulse that is why it is called sa node is the pacemaker tissue of the heart so from the sa node where are the impulses going impulses are going into the av node this av node is present posterior to the interatrial septum interatrial septum posterior side of the interatrial septum from the av node it is going via this av bundle or it is also called as bundle of his bundle office this is all av bundle or bundle office 
this bundle office divides into right bundle office and left bundle office though it is not a uh, yeah, left bundle branch ab this uh, this left bundle branch and the right bundle branch okay and at the termination of this they give away some fibers these fibers are called purkinje fibers they are called purkinje fibers so we have got sca node sca node is sending the impulse to the av node via three pathways posterior anterior and the middle pathway three pathways sca node then so okay little bit about the pacemaker tissue of the heart so components of the conduction system include sca node is a crescent shaped node in the right atrium posterior wall of the right atrium av node is at the interatrial septum and the av bundle of is and this branch bundles this bundle branch are in the interventricular septum this bundle branches are in the interventricular septum and this purkinje fibers which spread the impulse to all of the ventricle walls is the purkinje fibers so sca node av node bundle of is to right and left bundle of is and into purkinje fibers so sca node has the highest rate of depolarization in the whole system sca node is very powerful system so it will set the heart rate it starts each heartbeat and sets the pace for the whole heart and that is why it is called the pacemaker tissue of the heart sca node is called the pacemaker tissue of the heart it starts it initiates the heartbeat so it starts each heartbeat and sets the pace for the whole heart if it is beating at 80 times our heart rate will be 80 if it is beating at 70 times heart rate will be at 70 so it will set the pace for the whole heart and therefore is called the pacemaker tissue then so sa node impulse is coming from the sa node then the impulse is passing through the av node from sa node it is going to the av node and through the av node it, the ventricular impulses are going all over the ventricles okay all over the ventricles then your whenever this impulses are going all over the ventricles this uh, uh, the blood is ejected out of this ventricles then again the heart will recover again I, and again the next blood will come into it and again the next beat will set in so this then the impulse travel from the sa node to the atria to the av through uh, sa node throughout the atria to the av node causing the atria to contract when impulse is coming from sa node to the av node atria will contract when the impulse is coming from the uh, av node into this bundle of is and the purkinje fibers then the ventricle will contract when the ventricles contract the blood is going leaving the heart and it is going to this large blood vessels the impulse travels from the sa node through the atria to the av node whenever that is impulse is passing atria will contract so this contraction effectively ejects blood superiorly into the large arteries leaving the head some av node it is coming into Uh, uh bundle of is right and left bundle of is and this small ones are this purkinje fibers the termination of Pur purkinje fibers have got the biggest velocity the velocity of this vessel is more diameter of this is more that is why it is common never contraction is happening it simultaneously it is happening all over your ventricular valve when it is happening all over the ventricular valve when they are contracting the blood is leaving the heart so this is about our heart physiology so hope i am clear so today we have seen how the blood is carried about the little bit about the circulation pulmonary circuit systemic circuit and the closure of the av valves and the semi lunar valves and what heart sounds what closes will give rise to what heart sound and little bit about your conducting system of the heart so sa node this one is the sa node this is the av node then bundle of is and this is right and left bundle of is and this terminally this is uh, giving into small branches so the diameter of this purkinje fibers is large so impulses are carried at the rate of 4 meters per second and it is uh, 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 the impulse is generating and it is going all over your ventricles when the it is going all over the ventricles your 
big vessels are opening up and the blood is leaving the heart yeah that's about it